My name is Dr. Suwajla. I'm the scientific director with Ziva Fertility Centers. Many times when couples come to us, uh, they often ask us why the husband is also being evaluated. But you have to understand when a couple comes for infertility treatment, we are supposed to evaluate both the husband and the wife. So understand that your wife will be evaluated with hormonal investigations, an ultrasonography, uh, physical examination, etc. But you as a male, as a husband will be um, asked to undergo a semen analysis procedure. So it's a very simple investigation where you're asked to give a uh, ejaculate for semen and uh, the sperms inside the ejaculate are then assessed. We'll try to understand what the parameters are that we are looking at um, when we when it comes to a semen analysis report. So uh, there are a few criteria that you need to understand. Uh, it's the abstinence period. It is either should not be less than three days or more than seven days. So remember that when you're giving a sample. Now, when we come to the semen analysis report, the parameters that are included are the semen volume. And we're going to look at the 2000 10 uh, values only because those are the WHO parameters that have been set for all the fertility centers and we follow these parameters only. So the semen volume should be 1.5 ml at least. Anything lower than that then we call it as an abnormal sample. Now sperm concentration. Sperm concentration is 15 million per ml as in in each milliliter of the semen sample 15 million at least should be present. Anything less than that is called as an abnormal sample and it is termed as an oligozoospermia sample. So remember oligo means less than 15 million per ml. The total sperm count which is the sperm count in the entire sample in the entire volume of semen should at least be 39 million per the whole ejaculate. So in the entire ejaculate at least 39 to 40 should be there. Anything less than that again is termed as an abnormal sample. If you look at the progressive motility, uh, it should be a minimum of 32%. So in the entire sample, basically motility is assessed as progressive, non-progressive or immotile. So if we look at only the progressive, at least 32% of 100 sperms should be motile. But if you look at total motility, that is progressive and non-progressive, then the motility should be at least 40%. Why are we doing this? Because non-progressive also by a procedure in the laboratory can become pro uh, progressive and that can help in successful uh, achievement of pregnancy. So it's very critical that we add progressive and non-progressive. When we look at vitality, it should be at least 58%. This is because if a sample has all immobile, immotile sperms, then out of these we do a test, vitality test, where at least we should have an estimation that out of all these immotile ones, at least 58% are alive and we can understand that by the procedure that we do to make, make out whether they are alive or dead. Then coming to the sperm morphology, sperm morphology basically means the way it is shaped. It has a head, it has a mid piece and a tail and if you look at the shapes and sizes, this is how a normal one looks. It has a head, a mid piece and a tail. But if you look at the abnormal forms, you can see there are so many defects head defects, a neck and a mid piece defect, a tail defect. So there could be two tails, it could have a bent neck, it could have a large or a, a small head. All these affect the way the sperm um, uh, has its fertility potential. So if there are any defects, then the fertility potential of that sperm comes down. So it's very critical that when we are an analyzing the semen analysis report, we also look at uh, morphology. Then we look at the pH and leukocytes and all these things. These are of course very critical, but what you need to basically understand um, are the sperm concentration, motility and morphology. These are very three critical things. If the motility is less, it is called as an astinozoospermic sample. If the morphology is poor, it is called as a teratozoospermic sample. Sometimes we encounter samples where all three parameters are below normal and we term it as oligoestheno teratozoospermia. If you want to understand more, if you've got a report which shows some abnormal values and you want to either have it tested again or get a second opinion, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.